All around the world, marijuana is being decriminalized or even made legal. But is this really a good idea? In the online debate, the harmful sides are often downplayed. So let's look at the three. Weed is nearly harmless in comparison to the widely available drugs and even foods that you can consume that have irreversible long-term health complications. Like, it is an argument that I feel like we, I thought we were completely over. Um, it's significantly less uh, unhealthy than, than alcohol. I don't know, I mean, let's watch. The most powerful arguments against legalizing marijuana. <laughs> Argument number one. In the last few decades, marijuana has been engineered to become much more potent. Today, marijuana is so potent that it's actually a strong drug that may cause psychosis. The main active ingredient of marijuana is THC, and there's strong evidence that THC is related to psychosis, regardless of other risk factors. Marijuana also contains a substance called CBD that seems to counteract this effect. It's even being tested as a treatment against psychosis and anxiety. But because it doesn't make you high, growers have gradually decreased the amount of CBD in marijuana over the last few decades while increasing THC levels. Sample testing showed that THC levels have risen from around 4% in the 1990s to nearly 12% in 2014, shifting the ratio of THC to CBD from 1 to 14 in 1995 to mid. about 1 to 80 in 2014. It's unclear oh. how precise those tests were, however. Overall, recent findings suggest that the more marijuana you consume and the stronger it is, the higher your risk of developing psychosis. But how high is the risk of psychosis for the general population? A study from Britain found that while marijuana use has risen significantly between 1996 and 2005, the number of schizophrenia cases, a type of psychosis, remained stable. The risk of marijuana-induced psychosis remains the highest for people who already have a high risk of psychosis to begin with. For them, it seems more likely that marijuana speeds up the development of their condition. I'm very hard to shoot schizophrenia trigger from weed at 16. If you have a history of schizophrenia in your family, don't do it. Otherwise, it's safe. The dude is emotionally charged at the moment. Just ignore it. Just like doing alcohol with liver disease. This isn't a good reason to make it illegal. You have to basically make everything illegal. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing. Here's the thing I don't understand, though. Like, I've gotten fucking insanely high. Like, I've gotten high where it's, like, uncomfortable. Especially because it was with, uh, with, like... I think it was wax, like, or it was, like, I, I think it was laced with hash oil on top of it, or, or a dab, yeah, yeah, oh, a dab, yes, 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 so, that shit, that shit uh, used to fuck me up, like, it used to fucking ruin my life, and that's part of the reason why I stopped, it's part of the reason why I stopped smoking it. And now I'm wondering, like, I wonder if I was, yikes, you do a big, no, no, it wasn't me, motherfucker. I don't know how to do any of that shit. No, the, the Coachella plane ride is, is an entirely different type of drug. The, the type of drug that we're talking about on the Coachella plane ride is, is, is uh, shiitake mushrooms, you know, portobello, shiitake, uh, the, the ear uh, mushroom, whatever the fuck it's called. You know, that's the... That's that shit I do like. Uh, but, and by the way, I fucking don't listen to the Grateful Dead. I'm just letting you know. Make no mistake. Yeah, my mom is here and she can hear everything I'm saying. Anyway, so. The point I was trying to make is that now I'm thinking like, what the fuck? Do I have schizophrenia? And then again, I'm also 29. I feel like I would have developed it by now. 25 is like when you start developing schizophrenia. Right? I've had terrible panic attacks from weed. I thought I was dying for like a 
year when I was like 17 because of weed. I shit you not. To run down schizophrenia on drugs in most sense is a bad idea. LSD is the worst being practically the opposite of an antipsychotic. Weed sounds like a pretty bad idea and doing any unprescribed drugs is a dangerous road when you have a mental illness. People are most likely to be born susceptible to many diseases and illness and everything makes you, well, you, the girl would have been susceptible. She probably could have, couldn't have known, but it doesn't mean it turns you schizophrenic. No, it means that you have underlying schizophrenia that was previously undiagnosed. No, you don't. Everyone gets fucked on dabs. Dabs will make any casual smoker extremely uncomfortable. Wait, that's why? So if someone, let's say, hallucinated on like edibles or hallucinated on weed, does that mean that they might have, or not und undiagnosed, latent, sorry. I'm currently dependent on bud, which I hate myself for, but I'm glad it's this and rather than alcohol or the harder shit. We can further mess up already prevalent mental illnesses, but those need to be there first. Not like we gives you schizophrenia. I'm bipolar and a smoker of 14 years. It helps me control my thoughts and emotions. So it's really case by case. I was on benzos for four years that resulted in me having seizures and fighting addiction for years. The better alternative. Old weed gave me bad vertigo for a week. <sighs> Listen, there's a couple reasons why I stopped smoking weed. One, because it would fuck me up. Also, never mix it with Adderall. Not good. You will fucking, you will literally go crazy. Um, so that's one. Two. Especially dabs. Oh my God. Um, two. Paul's weed and Eddie's lit is not. You're crazy. It's like fucking PCP, dude. Or at least what I assume is PCP. Like how? The fuck do you mean like how? Have you ever been in college and you're fucking cracked out and you're crunching and, and you're trying to get ready, but then also like you have to fucking fall asleep. So you're like, yo, I'll just smoke a little bit of weed. Don't do it. It's actually really bad. Anyway, here's what I will tell you. So as far as marijuana goes, um, no matter how fucking high you get, no matter how zooted you get, ultimately, you can go to sleep, right? Unless you do edibles, <laughs> in which case it could be kind of difficult for you to be able to go to sleep or worse, you will still be high in your sleep and wake up still fucking high. Edibles, not even once. Edibles is not something to fuck with unless you know exactly what the fuck you're doing, okay? And I say this as someone who likes shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms, uh, which are legal and cool, of course. Uh, I'm not talking about any other, like, psilocybin mushrooms or anything like that, of course. I would never. I'm talking about portobello. Anyway, those mushrooms, I feel like you are guiding the, the journey. Like you're on the steering wheel. With edibles, the car is going maybe 150 miles an hour. Maybe the car is going wherever the fuck you want to go to. Maybe the car is going somewhere you don't want to go. You have no control. Rooms is the opposite in my experience, depending on how much you do though. Bro, that's the wrong rooms I can handle, but weed I can't. No, like it, it's entirely dependent on how much you, how much you take. <laughs> you are 100% wrong. You just had a bad edible experience. I mean, I've had numerous edible experiences. It's really important that everyone knows their own temper weedic number when it comes to edibles. Anyway.
So do five dried grams in a dark room, the Terrence McKenna trip? No. I'm trying to have fun, you fucking weirdo. I'm not trying to like see God. What the fuck? Like that's what I'm saying. Like it's like No, nah, fucking shrooms is sick. Um, uh, microdosing is the best. Exactly. Anyway, uh It's just, I'm like thinking about it now. It's such a wonderful feeling like you're on a fucking cloud. Just happy. Anyway, um, this is what was, what being high does to you from earlier this year. Oh, this was. That's this. Manuel. That's the homie. Like, let's see. Let's see. Is he like, is he piping it up? So I watched it. Dude, it was real passionate. Like. I literally wanted to turn it off. I like I felt uncomfortable and not because I know Manuel Ferrara like like they just looked real passionate with one another and I know Manuel's married too. And I saw that porn and I was like, "Damn, like for the first time in my life, I feel like he just cucked a porn star." And then I started thinking to myself like, "This motherfucker is cucking Johnny Sins." Like that's the goat. I still remember this. This is a real, this is a story about when I was jerking off and I saw Manuel Ferrara shoot a porno with uh, Johnny Sins' wife, Mrs. Sins. And, and I wasn't high when I watched that, but it was, a, it was devastating. Like it, it just felt too, it felt like they were really into one another. And it was, I, it was a really private moment that I should not be a part of. It felt like, you know? Anyway, so that's what I think about when I'm jerking off. So there you go. That's why it probably takes a long time. <laughs> I was high in this. Yeah, this was 420. 420, baby. Oh, weed is so tight, bro. Oh, my God. 420, bro. All his pornos are like that. Uh, dabs are made to ruin your life. They're literally made for stoners who have trouble getting high because they smoke every day. Don't base any mental assumptions based on dabs. Drop the title, homie. Kiss of Sins uh, with uh, Manuel Ferrara. Hassan, I beseech you to heed my warning. I keep getting timed out over and over again, so I couldn't respond. I wish I could get something across without having to spam. My sister was 31 years of age at the time. Patrick Cockburn's son, Henry, was even younger. THC is extremely dangerous. CBT may be less harmful and may have some practical applications, but they are not properly studied. Hassan, I beg you to stop. Please take my word for it. Stop doing any cannabis. <laughs> uh, they've said CBT instead of CBD in the past 20 messages. They don't even know the names of the drugs they're referencing. Oh, no. Is it like a, is this an elaborate ruse, Fabian the Syndicalist? Or are you really an anti-marijuana reactionary? They actually do clinical studies on candy flipping, taking XTC, MDMA, when you slowly come out of your LSD stuff, strip stuff as well. I've done almost every drug there is from weed to LSD, the Kratom and OPs, even med. Nothing gave me panic attacks quite like weed did at times. It was very specific terror that made me think for sure I was having a heart attack. Eh. I mean, for me, it was never that bad. I've just had like real paranoid thoughts. Like crazy paranoia. Like psychotic, for sure. And, um, I think part of it is, uh, part of it is because of my like insecurities. I think that I have, they get heightened if it's a bad trip. Um, I think that's what it is. If you get like really, really, really high, that's what happens where I'm just like, overanalyzing my own, uh, personal insecurities about my character and my shortcomings 
and then I get into this like deep self-reflective uh, state where I am recognizing that it's an anxiety that I'm experiencing, but but in that moment, it's so powerful that even though I recognize that I'm actually personally self-diagnosing myself, I'm still like, doesn't matter. It's still real right now. And it still fucking feels crazy. And it feels scary that I am this person. So that's why I don't really smoke weed that much. We are, Alex Jones was right. We're a bunch of meth heads watching a deranged pervert. But, I mean, that's just one of, that's just one of the, one of the experiences. Also, speaking of which, like, everyone has different experiences, and there's plenty of people who, like, literally fucking medicate with weed, so, like. Hey, welcome to normally having bad anxiety, LMAO. Okay, well, I fucking never want that, so, hey. <clears throat> Caffeine is a huge cause of anxiety. I think a lot of folks become more aware of their anxiety when they're high, and especially if they drink a lot of caffeine. Man, I'm not even remotely anxious, though, when I'm fucking living my life through the day. I think it's, I'm well-adjusted because I eat my fingies, dude. It's so good. It's such a good coping mechanism that I just, like, don't feel anxious at all. Like, I never have, never have a feeling of anxiety. It's called being... It's called self-medication, baby. Nails. You feel me? Mmm, cuticles, baby. Chicken fingies. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. I beseech thee to move onward swiftly. Okay, bro, come on. Don't make fun of the guy. He already is like... <laughs> He's already terrified of weed, man. That's not how that works, dude. Not at all. Kind of hard to explain here, but there's a huge connection between ego death, like from shrooms and left wing politics. Oh, hey, I know that guy. He's my wife's doctor. Oh, no. Delta HTAC is a legal hemp derived chemical that is legal everywhere. It's like weak THC with no paranoia anxiety. They're trying to ban it. Because your power tolerance was too low for dabs, for sure. The amount of fucking dabs that, that were, I mean, these dudes were like psychos. I mean, they were crackheads. The dudes that were also smoking weed. So it makes sense. I mean, I was living in a fucking crack den, basically. So, remember how I told you I was living in the frat house's kitchen? Yes. Yep, I know. Crackhead is an ableist term. Why? Because addiction is a disease. Is that what? What? What, what? It's more racist, I would say, than fucking ableist. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fucking hit me on some, hit me on the racism. I did not run the ad. I'm gonna run the ad, and then we're gonna get back to three arguments why weed should stay illegal. Reviewed. You people are actually clues about actual cannibal science. Yeah, I don't know any, like, I just know the basic stuff. I, I did not know that this is like. Anyway, I'm running the ad right now. Top of the hour, every hour, six second outbreak, and then we're going to continue with the marijuana stuff and then maybe some other reacts some fun stuff. All right. Condition rather than causing it, as far as we know right now. So the reasoning goes, if fewer people have access to marijuana, the lower the risk of marijuana-induced psychosis. But actually, you could argue that precisely because marijuana is illegal, more people will end up with psychosis. 
Prohibition makes illegal drugs stronger and more potent because this way you can ship more product in a smaller space and sell it at a greater profit. This is what happened during the prohibition of alcohol in the US where hard liquor became the norm. And the same is happening with marijuana now. Imagine a world where liquor is the only alcohol available. You have the choice of either not drinking at all or getting much drunker than you would like to. This is the situation for many marijuana smokers today. People didn't stop drinking during prohibition and the numbers show that laws don't deter people from using marijuana. We can't make marijuana go away, but we can make it safer. If marijuana were legal, there would be more options for consumers and regulators could, for example, insist on a high level of CBD. Just like most people don't drink an after-work bottle of vodka, many people would gladly consume the after-work beer version of marijuana. Argument 2. Marijuana is a gateway drug. If it's Why do people keep saying Pac-Man raid? Like, did he raid me? It's not showing up. But uh, thank you for the raid, David. Hope you're having a good... Hope you had a good stream. Um, I don't know why it didn't show up on my end, but hey, sorry about that, but... We're learning about how weed is, is should be illegal. Just kidding. The, the opposite, but, you know. It's legalized, there will be a spike in the use of much more dangerous drugs. A Here's my druggie. Can you give a general warning to your young viewers not to take anecdotes seriously? Here's some people hear discussions like this and think drugs are completely safe. Of course not, dude. Yeah, like, don't fucking... Drugs are not safe at all. Dr. Scott Atlas resigned and he wished Joe Biden well. These Zoomers are already popping pills like Lil Peep and singing Emo's rap songs. Don't worry. A 2015 study found that about 45% of lifelong marijuana users took some other illegal drug at some point. Legalizing marijuana could reinforce this trend. As more young people try legal marijuana, they might end up trying harder drugs. But it turns out... Isn't alcohol a gateway drug? Isn't caffeine a gateway drug? I mean, even Mormons fucking patch their religion, brother. Oh, well, if you drink uh, alcohol, that means you might do weed, which then... <coughs> I know he's reviewing the argument. I'm just making counter-arguments to the arguments that he's reviewing. I'm not saying these are his arguments. Even Mormons patch their religion to fucking change the rules so they can drink coffee and shit. The, the real gateway to drug use comes much earlier, cigarettes. One study showed that teens who started smoking before the age of 15 It's worse. Th this is worse than weed, in my opinion. Dean were 80% more likely to use illegal drugs than those who didn't. And a 2007 study found that teenagers so between 12 and 17 who smoked were three times more likely to binge drink, seven times more likely to have used drugs like heroin or cocaine, and were also seven times more likely to resort to marijuana. But if that's the case, how could making more drugs legal stop the use of hard drugs? At first, it's important to acknowledge that people don't use drugs because they're legal or not. If you want to buy any drug, you'll always find someone happy to sell. Pog! The real question is why do people develop an unhealthy relationship with drugs at all? Studies show that certain conditions make people especially vulnerable to drugs and addiction. A difficult childhood, early trauma, low social status, depression, even genetic factors. 
which drug they get addicted to is more often than not a matter of chance. Addicts take drugs to escape their problems, but drugs don't solve any of those problems and instead become a new problem. But punishing people for their unhealthy coping mechanisms doesn't change anything about the underlying causes either. So some argue we need to take a completely different route. In 2001, Portugal had one of the worst drug problems in Europe, so it was desperate enough to try something radical. Possession and use of all illegal drugs was decriminalized. You would no longer be arrested. Instead, authorities launched a major health campaign. People who were found with a small amount were referred to support services and got help with treatment and harm reduction. Drug use was seen as a chronic disease, not a crime. The results were stunning. The number of people who tried drugs and kept using them fell from 44% to 28% by 2012. The use of hard drugs decreased, as well as HIV and hepatitis infections and overdoses. Making this is yet another fucking glaring example of of like a policy that just absolutely fucking works just absolutely works and is like profoundly successful and yet we just go la 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 i don't want to hear you i don't want to hear you it's like it's like it's right there it's right there do you see it it's right there it's right in front of you why do you refuse it's socialism it's same shit with like the nhs you know socialized medicine la 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 i can't hear you it's my freedom to die of diabetes if i get it fuck you you communist that's just how it is where we just refuse to acknowledge it <sighs> drugs legal might overall help society much more than it harms it argument number three Marijuana is addictive and unhealthy. It needs to remain illegal to keep harm at a minimum. While marijuana addiction is more psychological than physical, it is still a real problem. The demand for treatment for marijuana addiction has more than doubled in the past decade alone. In total, about 10% of people who try marijuana will become addicted. This is also related to higher THC levels. A study released in 2017 tracked the potency of marijuana in Dutch coffee shops over a period of 16 years. For every 1% increase in THC, 60 more people entered treatment nationwide. In terms of negative health effects, some studies linked marijuana use to increased blood pressure and lung problems, while a 2016 study found that marijuana use was unrelated to physical health problems except for a higher risk of gum disease. Some studies showed that marijuana use alters teenagers' brains and decreases their intelligence, but when more recent studies took drinking and smoking into account, the results were inconclusive. <laughs> Y'all get pepega, dude. Overall, research shows that taking any drugs while the brain is still in development is bad for you. But the truth is we don't know yet how unhealthy marijuana is. We need more funding for research, which... I am not a reactionary. You're not making an actual argument. You're engaging in puerile lavatorial abuse. This is extraordinarily unbecoming of you. You should know better. Learn to argue. Can you cite any RCTs? <laughs> puerile lavatorial. Dude, maybe if you smoke weed, you'd fucking chill out a little bit. Like, not gonna lie, dude. <laughs> no, he always talks like this. At first, I thought it was a bit. What I imagine when you read that? Yeah, it's fucking Nathan J. Robinson, dude. He's in the chat. Nathan J. Robinson unfollowed me, dude. I think it after the police stuff. Yeah, Nate Robinson. He he unfollowed me because 
I said society will always have a need for some form of policing. Whether you call it police or not, there has to be like a group of individuals that still enforce the democratically, even in an anarchist organization of society, you still need like democratically elected representatives that enforce the wishes that were also democratically elected. And he like quote tweeted me and, and like misunderstood what I was saying and then unfollowed me. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. He blew the fuck up on you? Yeah. Democratically elected wishes? Sorry. Democratically voted on. Uh, justifiable. Uh, the wishes. Rules. Whatever you want to call it. In an anarchist society, it would be very different. But yeah, pretty much murderers wouldn't be allowed because it's you demonstrating authority over someone else. <laughs> Another lavatorial take from Hassan. Typical. Oh, guys, stop, stop writing. Like, what? Oh, Buddha. Itana, what? Rock to Hassan. I am not a reactionary. You're not making an actual argument. You're just engaging in puerile lavatorial abuse. It's extraordinarily unbecoming of you. You should know better. Learn to argue. Can you cite any RCTs? How does the existence of multiple legal poisons in our society justify the addition of another? Again, put forward an argument of a change. You're so right, then it shouldn't be difficult. Go ahead! <laughs> uh, I don't think you understand. Like, I am a hedonist. Okay, so... I'm never going to be against, like, you know, having a little bit of fun. As long as you're safe. The difference between medicine and poison is the dosage. Oh my god, this is turning into a meme. Like, the... They feed us poison. They take away our medicine. Whatever that fucking three-prong meme is, like... <laughs> You have an argument though so far you've belched up nothing but badinage and semi-literate babble. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. No man, you're right. I mean we're watching an entire video about your arguments on it. And how your arguments are just doo-doo butter. Which is hard to get while marijuana remains illegal. We yeah, they feed us poison and sell us their cures while suppressing our medicine. Exactly. Can put Your medicine? Hasanabi broadcast. No, into perspective though. 16% of people who consume alcohol become alcoholics and 32% of people who try cigarettes become smokers. We know for sure alcohol affects your brain, destroys your liver and causes cancer, while tobacco clogs your arteries, destroys your lungs and also causes cancer. 3.3 million people die from alcohol abuse each year, while smoking kills more than 6 million people. Nobody is suggesting tobacco and alcohol are harmless just because they're legal. Also, nobody is seriously proposing to prohibit them, even though they are extremely dangerous. Legality is a way to exercise some control over them, especially when it comes to protecting young people. It's often much harder to buy legal drugs for teenagers than to buy illegal ones. Official sellers can get hefty fines and lose their license if they sell to underage kids. Legality creates incentives here that drug dealers can't exploit. So making marijuana legal doesn't mean endorsing it. It means taking responsibility for the risks it poses. It could also open the floodgates to tons of new research that shows us how harmful it really is and to whom.
Conclusion Marijuana is a drug, and just like any other drug, it has negative consequences for a sizable portion of the people who use it. It is not harmless. The best way to protect society from its negative consequences seems to be legalization and regulation. Thanks to our partnership with So, do you seriously believe that weed is easier to get than alcohol? I don't know. I mean, weed was easier to get in college than alcohol, for sure. Even though it was illegal. And technically, alcohol was illegal as well. Yeah. For sure. It, it was super easy to get. We legalize weed and potheads are still super annoying. I don't know. I think that was the greatest uh, part of it, which is like now everybody makes fun of potheads for like loving weed or making it their entire personality. Alcohol was easy to get once I got a fake ID. Man, that shit wasn't easy, even with a fucking fake ID. People clock it. What kind of fake IDs were you using, dude? They're most certainly not my arguments, actually. I disagree with almost syllable of that ridiculous video. Please don't impute to me opinions that I do not hold. Try making an argument for once. Yeah, my argument is that weed is relatively less harmful than readily available legalized uh, drugs and stimulants that you can get currently. And its side effects are ultimately again way way less harmful and overall if you do it responsibly if you do the weed the devil's lettuce responsibly then uh then it's fine that's it it's like saying you should never drink and alcohol should be abolished well they did do that and it fucking failed and weed fails in a similar capacity. So unless you live in this delusional fucking crazy world where uh, we, you're magically going to use a wand to eliminate weed in its entirety. Where it's just never going to exist and no one's going to remember that it ever existed. Good luck trying to fucking put the... Uh, good luck trying to put the toothpaste back in the, in the bottle. Okay? in the tube. So that's my argument. My argument is that it's not for everybody. It's not for me. Um, but overall, I would never ever in a million fucking years desire abolition. They're most certainly not my arguments actually. Okay, dude, now you're not listening to me and you're just fucking like, you're just rewriting the same shit. The bottom line is that highly immoral and selfish to use drugs, including cannabis. Wait, what? And that it is not a victimless crime? What? It's a highly immoral, it's highly immoral and selfish to use drugs. First of all, you're now changing your argument. What the fuck you mean, dude? Hey, guess what? You stupid fuck. I know you use a lot of fancy fucking words. You know what the fucking biggest victims are of weed? Not your sister that may or may not have had a psychotic episode because she might have had some latent schizophrenia or whatever, but like the millions of fucking black and brown people we threw in jail forever. How about that, you dumb fuck? Shove your fucking one Swedish empirical study up your asshole if you're going to talk about the fucking the human impact that uh, the 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 criminalization of of weed and and uh, the war on drugs has had on human beings there you go are you happy with my fucking answer god damn dude prohibition was not comparable prohibition was an attempt to introduce supply not consumption i have not changed my argument at all at least i don't curse and slur my sister was perfectly healthy beforehand hey you can be you can have latent schizophrenia 
and be perfectly healthy beforehand. I'm just letting you know that, like, you should know how that works. I don't know if your sister had latent schizophrenia, but it seems to me like it's not something that just you can fucking make people crazy. That's not a thing. It doesn't work that way. It's like reefer madness era psychotic reactionary fucking evidence that you're pointing to to say like weed made my sister crazy. And I'm I'm feeling it's a little difficult for me to argue with you because it's obviously an emotional fucking point of view for you. I don't want to tell you that you're like Yep, only black people. No, sorry. The, crim the, the, the war on drugs famously fucking uh, targeted white people. Like, what the fuck are you saying? It's not just only black and brown people that were impacted by this, but it absolutely was directed towards black and brown people, you fucking dolt, you fucking dingus, you dumbass. So much so that they had to apologize for it, too. The Republican Party has apologized for it on the record. They admitted it. The sentencing disparity between crack cocaine is straight the fuck up an invention to jail black people. He's unironically arguing anyone who uses the drug is a bad influence for those who cannot, cannot use it due to their family history. By this logic, we should never drink even soda. It is a bad precedent for those with diabetes. No, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's insane. I'm a convicted felon because of four grams of weed and my neoliberal governor of Wisconsin denied me a pardon last year. Nah, dude, you deserve to have that on your record for the rest of your life, dude. Because, hey, this dude's sister had a fucking, uh, had a bad episode in, in Sweden, so, or wherever they're at. So, no, sorry, permanent mark on your record, buddy. Guess what? Can't do it, can't fix it, dude. She had mental overthrow. Do you understand why... By the way, Fabian Sinclair, I don't know if you're in here still, but like, do you, do you get why people get fucking frustrated with like idiotic takes like this? And also, if you consider like uh, the, the illegal ways and like the kinds of people that we're funding, then you should also recognize that the reason why they get funded that way, those operations only exist as a consequence of the black market's existence. And guess what? The absolute best way to the absolute best way to fucking deal with the, the cartels, for example, is full-blown decriminalization or legalization. I've done nothing of the kind. I cited contemporary evidence. I don't know whether she had latent schizophrenia, so what? I cited both anecdotal and empirical evidence. Do you have anything to contribute besides obscenities and calum calumnies? I never commented on soda or family history. I am not in favor of mass incarceration. Okay, well then you're a fucking pussy. Okay? You're a fucking pussy who says, oh, we should completely fucking criminalize weed or that consumption of weed is, is horrible and also immoral because of uh, the anecdotal evidence of my sister. Plus, on top of that, because I personally believe uh, because of the empirical evidence that I've, uh, the empirical evidence from Sweden that I, I, uh, that I read that claims that weed is, is, it creates like mental overthrow, whatever the fuck that is. And like leads to violent behavior, which is straight the fuck up white supremacist propaganda, by the way, there's a reason why it's called fucking marijuana because it wanted to be, because they wanted to make it sound more fucking Mexican and exotic, okay? And, and every single thing that you're saying as far as like smoking weed makes you go crazy and smoking weed makes you violent is directly anti-black and anti-brown white supremacist fucking propaganda. The reason why I haven't been like saying anything about it, the reason why I haven't really talked about it all that much is because I just thought you were fucking around. 
Okay? And it's also complete fucking bullshit. Like, if anything, weed has been decriminalized this fucking country over the course of the past couple fucking years. And crime rates are getting lower and lower. Like, violent crimes on the decline. Historically, it's the fucking 90s. As we've eased our restrictions on marijuana, if weed made you fucking psychotic and violent, we would be killing everyone! Why don't you fucking drop the thesaurus? And I don't know. <laughs> Be a little bit more empathetic and understanding. Despite your personal and very emotional experience with weed. Or what you attribute to weed rather. This is about the book he's using as a source. Scientists state that Berenson is drawing inappropriate conclusions on the research he cites primarily by inferring causation from correlation, as well as cherry-picking data that fits his narrative and falling victim to selection bias via his use of anecdotes. I'm unfamiliar with uh, Alex Berenson. But... Like, ideas like the ones that you espouse are really fucking horrible. One, it, it inhibits progress. And it stops people from treating this as an addiction. And rather justifies the further criminalization of drug consumption. So it's disgusting for all the people that actually end up getting addicted to uh, drugs. Okay? Two, it locks up people that are otherwise completely fucking innocent. Like, sometimes forever. And it's all based off of, it's all based off of white supremacist, psychotic fucking bile. I'm not suggesting you're a white supremacist. I thought you were doing a bit, but your arguments on weed, especially ones uh, that revolve around reefer madness and uh, an inclination towards violence or violent behavior as a consequence of weed consumption, are arguments that white supremacists created originally. You are literally mirroring white supremacist arguments on weed. Okay? I'm not saying you're a white supremacist. I would be surprised if you've been in my community for three months and, and you've been a white supremacist. You'd be a real self-hating white supremacist, that's for sure. Your large corpus of empirical evidence, not just from Sweden. Okay, I'm going to look into Alex Berenson and the large corpus of empirical evidence that you just showed. And if it's complete delusional horseshit, I will ban you permanently. Or at least, I will only unban you on the condition that you write a 2,000 word essay using all the flowery language that you use, describing how you are a buffoon who only portrays themselves as uh, one that has superior intellect with their incredible use of language. It's to mask the, the intellectual insecurities that they have. Okay? <laughs>